The stress of money comes from a much deeper place than simply not having enough of it. This is something that consumes most of our minds as we go on throughout our everyday adult life. It's stressful to think about, isn't it? What if I told you this stress started before you ever made your first dollar, before you even made your first financial mistake? No, this stress started with the conversations that injected themselves into your life at a very young age. I remember growing up being around discouraging discussion about money, about how it was some negative thing, how no one ever had enough of it. I mean, from when I was a kid up until even now, I still hear the same types of conversations and I hear negative conversations about money more than I do positive ones. So for most of us, there's already a negative undertone that we associate with money. Then on top of that, you see people who on the surface look like they're doing well financially. But in reality, when they go home and they're behind closed doors, they're just seconds away from breaking down. I mean completely falling apart because they just don't know what to do about their financial situation. Think about the amount of times you heard someone say, I'm broke or I'm struggling to pay my bills. I know I'm not the only one who's heard people say this over and over again. They might even say it as a joke, but do you think they're not stressed out? The ironic thing about this is the same way these conversations keep happening over and over again, so does the very reason that you stress out about money in the first place. That's why it never gets better because it never stops. The thing that never stops is your decisions that lead to a financial mistake, which you may acknowledge, but it still somehow leads to another bad financial decision and then another. It's ironic. Almost as ironic as sitting next to someone who leans over and just starts talking to you and telling you their entire life story, specifically all their problems. This is the true story, by the way. Just imagine listening to this story that gets worse the longer you listen, and it ends pretty much the same way every time. It ends with the person talking about how their financial situation is turned completely upside down, but they never realized their financial situation was always upside down. Only now is their financial situation worse than it ever has been because of their decisions. The conversation I had went like this. Yeah, so I'm working 70 hours a week. I'm paying for my daughter's rent. I can barely pay my own rent. You know, I'm, I'm also paying for her car. Yeah, and she's trifling too. She ran off with her boyfriend again, and neither one of them can keep up with their rent, so now I gotta do it. Oh, and she has this little three-year-old boy, so I've been helping her pay for daycare expenses too. I don't know why daycare is so expensive. It's just getting ridiculous. Now my car is getting old. I think it could break down at any given moment, but did you see that new Honda Accord 2021? You know what? I think I'm gonna take out a loan, and I'm gonna get me one. That is word for word how those conversations go. I mean, I've been there with people I don't even know who just pour their hearts out to me about how bad their financial situation is. And then I find out exactly why. Overspending and excessively taking out loans. And these loans are on things that depreciate. I think we should all be able to spend our hard earned money on what we want. That's what we all deserve. So this video isn't about judging anyone or anything like that. I'm simply pointing out the irony in this. And that irony is, you're spending money, you're buying things that you can't afford right now for whatever reason. And that stops the future you from being able to buy whatever you want because you're still paying for a mistake that you made five years ago. And it's okay to make financial mistakes. I've made plenty of them, but I learned from them. I've shared them with you guys in multiple videos and I've even made fun of myself because of them because I know now I can look back and laugh at those mistakes. But the powerful thing is I know where I went wrong and I'm showing you how not to fall into those same traps. You see what I'm saying? And that's exactly why it's not okay to repeat those mistakes. This topic might hurt some feelings or feel like a rude wake up call, but one of the reasons you're stressing about money is because it's easy to fall into the trap of caring how you feel more than you care about the reality that surrounds you. Why make you feel better with lies when I could help make you better with the truth? Think about it. Imagine being broke, but coming home to a 60 inch flat screen TV as you pick up the remote and turn on some music that blares through your state of the art surround sounds. And that music plays at a supreme quality as you walk throughout your kitchen with the fine decor and fancy granite countertops. You go through that kitchen to grab a drink as you sit down on your fluffy couch that you're still paying off from two years ago. That my friend is what a broke man in 2021 looks like. And as you can see, you can be broke but you can keep yourself comfortable by surrounding yourself around luxuries and the finer things in life. 
You can make yourself look comfortable by refusing to look at your bank account and not facing the truth that is and always has been your decisions that keep your bank account balance so low and your credit card balance so high. That's why you stress about money because it will always be in the back of your head until you do something about it. But what typically happens is instead of doing something about it, we just repeat the vicious cycle over and over. Remember those negative conversations I told you about earlier? This is a product of that because we've become so close-minded that we actually think the only way to get expensive items is by taking out a loan or paying it off in monthly increments over the course of years. We've gotten to a point in our minds where there isn't plenty of money to go around. And we think that only a select few are able to receive a lot of it. A world where only one stream of income exists. And that one stream of income pays you for your time, not your value. I remember getting laughed at for saying I wanted to buy my next car in cash. I have a pretty expensive taste in cars, by the way. I was met with this. Well, I hope you find a job that pays you enough to buy it in cash. And I was thinking to myself, who said anything about a job? Bro. People out here really have no idea about multiple streams of income, much less passive or residual income. At one point, I was the same way. And what I see now is people falling into the trap that I fell into. And that trap was this. The only thing that I thought about and considered when it came to making money was how much a job was able to pay me per hour. That's the same trap most people are falling into right now. And let me tell you this, bro. If we were all subject to the imprisonment of only being paid by the hour, which we only have 24 of each day, by the way. And if we were only able to get this income from one place, no wonder people stress about money. Why do you think people stress out about the possibility of losing their jobs? Because they don't have anything else but that job. There's no other streams of income. There's nothing to fall back on. And nine times out of 10, there's no money saved up in case their income stops coming in. That's why you stress about money. Your finances aren't together. And in the back of your head, you know that. But the stress of figuring it out and doing something about it gets to you so much that you'd rather just ignore it than face your problems. That creates bigger problems, which takes the vicious cycle that you're already trapped inside and it ties an endless loop to it. That endless loop circulates throughout your everyday life like it's a part of you, just like your emotions. You know I had to bring this up. Your emotions are extremely powerful and they do not stop. And that's another reason why you stress about money, bro. And I'm not talking about impulsive buying or lack of self-control either. I'm talking about the emotional ties you have with people that you want to help. And I'm talking about acting on those emotions. A lot of us don't set boundaries or limits. And by nature, we want to do good. You know what I mean? It's easy to want to become a hero and save everybody. One day I had to wake up and realize I can't save everybody. And the truth is, if you aren't financially where you want to be, you're already limited as far as how much you can help someone else. Letting your loyalty or even your love for someone else take over the importance of your own financial well-being is going to alleviate someone else's financial stress for a short period of time. But what about yours? It can set you back for months. I've seen it happen. And you know what? Just when you think you recovered, something else comes up and now you're in a position where you have to buckle down for an entire year just so you can get back to where you were. And that's while hoping to God your car doesn't break down, hoping you don't get sick or injured because if you did, that would really flip this thing upside down. I get it. It's hard to say no. I'm pretty sure I've struggled with saying no for a longer time than most people watching this video. I know that struggle too well. But it's an important word to learn. And if you're having trouble saying it, good old Reggie is going to help you out. When someone asks you for a certain amount of money, you pretty much know right then if you can do it or not. And if the amount of money they're asking for makes your soul feel like it just might leave your body and you can feel your pockets burning by just hearing them ask, that's when you frankly have to tell people, look, I can't help you right now. Y'all might have history. Y'all might go way back. You might have even grown up together. But bro, you have to realize if someone is asking you for more money than you can afford to give them and you still give it to them anyway, you're literally setting yourself back for someone who needs your help. So if you help them now and that leaves your pockets empty, what are you going to do if they need your help next week? You really won't be able to help them then, will you? So you're going to have to say no eventually anyway. And if it's not through your own common sense, it'll be in the form of life forcing you to say no when you go into your bank account balance and see that it's negative. 
See, when you say yes to your friends, your family, your significant other, your brother from another mother, you automatically say no to yourself. And that's okay if you can afford to help them, but I'm talking specifically about the times when you can't afford to help them. When you can't afford to help them and you tell them no, you can't worry about what they're going to think. You should not have to feel obligated or like you have to apologize for saying no. That's actually going to build on top of your stress about money if you feel like you have to help someone out. You can't get paranoid and think about, what if this person gets upset? What if they never talk to me again? You can't think about the consequences of not being able to help someone out. If they get upset, if they don't talk to you for a month, if they start to guilt trip you, you really need to ask yourself, is this person worth helping anyway? I mean, really, you can help someone four times in a row, but the moment you can't do the fifth favor, they start to guilt trip you saying, you know, if the roles were reversed, I would do it for you. Oh, I see how it is. I thought we were family. Man, we grew up together. And you're just going to leave me out to dry? Forget all of that. You have to rise above this type of negativity. If your family and your friends really have a tight bond with you, they will listen to you when you say no and they will take it to the chin. No matter how unpleasant it is at that moment, they will understand because they're thinking about your well-being too, not just theirs. Their level of understanding when you say no, that's how you know who's really there for you. So with that said, fix these problems and that's how you stop stressing about money so much. It's a simple concept. It's just not that easy, but you can do it. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed making this video for you. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with a friend, tell somebody about it. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay cold.